Well, there's updates about every three hours. And that's change in shape of the metal in the car, the electronics, different circuits, different software about every three hours. And many of those projects are three hours long. Some of those are three months long. And in aggregate, you have a pace of change that the rest of the industry does not even understand. Credits for this video go to Joe Justice and Alejandro Sauquillo. Links in the description. Most businesses want to reduce how much innovation happens for test purposes. Testing or homologation, making something road legal, that's usually a year long and $10 million, maybe more, sometimes $100 million per model. So if you change a Ford F-150 to a new Ford F-150, it goes through a year-long certification testing and about $100 million in the case of the F-150. So people managing cost look at spreadsheets and say, we don't want to do that very often. Well, in an agile company, what you do instead is you reduce the cost to change. Instead of changing slower because it's expensive, you very aggressively reduce the cost to change. And what that means is automated testing. By making it cheaper and faster to go through road legal certification, it's less painful. So you can make change more often. And Tesla got so good at it that autopilot is the side effect. Tesla's automated test is what's called factory mode. They also have even more simulated test, and part of that is Dojo. That's how huge these initiatives are. The R&D on Tesla's uh, automated testing is more than a lot of com companies' total valuation. Like testing is a first class citizen because it is the gateway to speed. If you can test a new model as road legal or not in 10 seconds for $1, what does that mean to your pace of deployment of new features? And Tesla is pretty close to that. It's a huge effort to do that. I mean, it's so big that it's the entire autopilot budget. Like autopilot was the side effect of having the cars test themselves in factory mode. But the result is, there's essentially zero cost to make change in Tesla. And every single car is individually tested as road legal. What was happening is that person had an idea that if they changed the way the rods, the aluminum rods that connect from the charge port to the battery pack, that, that was the bottleneck for allowing new power to, more power to come in. And it would dissipate its own heat simply by being a larger diameter rod and a few other things. And if they changed this rod, they could get more kilowatt hours into the pack. And what they were doing was they had the idea, so they just started bending rod. And even if they had generated a million dollars worth of scrap rod, which I don't think they came anywhere near that, it would have been worth it. Because going from 200 kilowatt hours to 250 kilowatt hours of charge rate surged the stock more than several billion dollars worth. So this empowering the employees worked out. So this person and everyone else coming in and helping, like me even a little bit, were bending the rod to try to get to fit and then putting it on cars in the plant. Now, these cars, because they have automated testing, you can try something anytime and know if it worked or not really quickly. Well, the automated test said pass. Those cars were sold. In three hours, it went from idea to now the cars accept 250 kilowatt hours. Now, they weren't advertised as accepting 250 kilowatt hours until further validation, but they were already being sold. They, could, they were already as good as before. In fact, they were better. And later, those same cars that were already sold, it was turned on. By the way, you can now charge 250 kilowatt hours. The owners got a free upgrade. Investors from institutions like Goldman Sachs ask Elon, what's your profit per vehicle and over how many years? And Elon says, we don't calculate that, but here's our trend. And our trend is going up. And for people that are used to thinking in trends like agile companies, you see this company's trend is the best. It is the dream. It is an exponential growth trend. They're already sold out into next year. It's all about how fast we release new product. If you, a Tesla releases 27 changes in hardware, in production, per model, per week. And I've made a chart here to correlate that with Toyota. 
and several other automotive manufacturers. You see Tesla's total company value is, 800, is $880 billion now. It's actually higher than this chart. Toyota is 210 billion US dollars. For Toyota, a hardware change is two and a half to four years. If you add up VW, Daimler and Volkswagen, that includes Porsche, that includes Bentley, that includes most of Europe's automotive manufacturing, Skoda, et cetera, their total value is $180.82 billion US. And they are a little slower. It's about four years for what they call a minor model change, a change in production. GM, Ford, Fiat, Chrysler, which is now Stellantis with Peugeot, is even slower. They're closer to four years as well for a minor change. And their total value combined, adding all those companies together, is $84 billion. The executives agree. All of the executives of this company, these companies say agility is their number one priority. And the reason why is for speed. Volkmar Denner, the CEO of Bosch, 300,000 employees worldwide, is my direct client. And Volkmar says agility is to increase our speed. Akio Toyota, the CEO of Toyota, sent his son to be trained by me, Daisuke Toyota, who's the next CEO of Toyota. And Akio says, the most important job for the CEO is to increase the speed of change. Herbert Dice, the CEO of Volkswagen, who my partner works with directly, says the big question is, are we fast enough? And my CEO, Elon Musk, says pace of innovation is the only thing that matters. I worked directly with Bill Gates from 2008 to 2010. And what I was able to learn from Bill Gates is do everything in parallel. And so I split cars into parallel executable projects. It turns out when you're inside a company like Tesla and you're splitting cars into parallel executable projects or modules, it looks just like the Spotify model. Henrik Nieberg had it right. And my best friend, Paul Tacken, when he rolled out agility across ING Bank, did the same thing. This has created what's called justice's law of restructuring a company. Yeah. You cut your product into modules, and then each team has a module, and that's it. That's the company. The modules of the system define the structure of the organization, or more simply put, the modules of the product define the structure of the company. That's why when I work with a company for agility, it's a company restructuring. I had a chance to work with the leadership team at Amazon. Jeff Bezos insists to never have a meeting where two pizzas couldn't feed the entire group. Across Amazon, we commonly understand that to be six people. So now we have small teams owning a module of the vehicle. When I worked in Silicon Valley, I learned you have company as a service teams instead of management. These companies are flat. They have almost zero management. There's almost no hierarchy at all. It's too slow. Instead, you have company as a service teams to provide the security, facilities, human resources, legal defense, and the actual company is these module teams that integrate directly together to make the product in these very short cycles. When I worked with Elon Musk, what I really learned from Elon is there's no marketing department. Your only goal is what's possible according to the laws of physics. A lot of people don't understand when Elon Musk talks about first principles thinking. There's a lot of good logic around it. And Elon himself has said several pages worth of information. What it really translates to be inside Tesla is there is no product goal unless it's ultimately what's possible according to the laws of physics. There's no mar market segmentation. There's no minimum viable product. It's simply what is physically possible. That's your only goal. That allows the people leading the products, I'll call them product owners, to innovate completely freely without ever having to wait for marketing targets or ever benchmark another competitor. That of course changes how production works. All the robots in production have flexible hands because they're assembling different parts about every three hours. The parts themselves have known stable interfaces just like a software API. This lets the teams integrate and, inter and iterate the designs very quickly. I summed it up in a tweet, automation in hardware and software and management with test in the loop is in fact the answer. 
Humans are for creative problem solving. Automation is for everything else. You are empowered. You can do anything. You can talk to Elon directly anytime you want. Anyone can. If anyone tries to stop you from talking to Elon directly, that's grounds for them to be fired. That keeps the company flat right there. And you can work across any department. In fact, there aren't really departments. Like you are fully strong. And if anyone prevents you from doing anything that you think is right, they will get thrown out of the company. That's what you're presented with as you join, no matter what position you join in, no matter what salary, it doesn't matter. Night shift minimum wage does not matter. That's what you get. And then whatever phone you walked in with is loaded with apps. I believe it was 24 apps at the time I joined. And these apps give you real-time progress on Tesla's finance and deliveries. There's things like, did a customer decline an order? You know that immediately. And you know, I should probably care about that. I should probably go to the root cause of why a customer declined that order. Was it because some, there was an issue with the seats they didn't like? The paint wasn't their expectation. What is it? And I should try to fix the root of that. So you're given self-management tools and you're not assigned a manager. Instead, you're given apps that let you decide where's the highest value you could add right now. And you're not assigned to any one area. You then just go into production and start designing, making financial decisions to the best of your capability. If we simply get a thumbs up or a green light or something that says that was good, we can self-manage. Now, because most companies historically had no automation for that, they had something called a manager. And that was a human whose job it was to say, yes, that was good. Really, that's their number one job. Yes, that was good. As quickly as possible. If they miss and ignore someone for a few months, that person, their productivity tends to suffer. They get what's called disengaged. And sometimes they even quit. So having a fast feedback loop from management is what allows us to manage our own work. Well, if you automate that, if your company has a deep expertise in machine learning and visual understanding of the world around it, you can put machine learning everywhere and give fast feedback through your phone and these huge monitors hanging all over the facility. And if you can create machine learning that basically says good job or thumbs up, it doesn't even have to say bad job. It doesn't need to. It just needs to say that was that was better than before. People can self-manage and you no longer have any need for management.